round 12 of Blackstone Fortress. Here I go, shuffling my initiative deck in ways that won't actually shuffle anything. And then I'll cut the deck, and then I'll sort of, I don't know, move things around. There we go. That feels shuffled to me. I mean, I couldn't tell you what's on top. Oh, wait. I keep forgetting. I'm allowed to look at this. In fact, I should look at this because there are gambits, potentially. <laughs> Two again first, and then Janus, and then Amelin. Wait a minute. This is the exact same order. That's the exact same order, practically. I, I have to do a better job of shuffling these things. I just don't know how. Okay, how what's the best way to shuffle six cards? Uh, let's put that one there, and then those three there, and then those three there. And then we'll kind of mix these three up, and then mix those three up, and then put them on top of each other, and then take two. See, this is like, this is kind of, if you think about encryption, this is the problem with encryption. You start to believe that the more complex you make it, the more, the, the more entropy you are introducing, but that's not true. It's just, you're just moving things around. Okay, one. There we go. Janus. Pius. Oh, this is different. This feels different. Tadius. Amelin. And then two. Oh, that feels so different to me. Okay, so does anyone need to do a gambit? Well, Janus should always do a gambit because it's free for him. Uh, that's a success. That means that Janus gets to move to the top, the, in front of the nearest baddie. And then the bad, the other baddies are way at the end, so great. Wow, that's a great... That was really good. All right, here's some Destiny dice. Let's see what happens. Hopefully no doubles. Eh, some doubles. Uh, six and a two. Are there only four Destiny die? I thought there were like five. I guess not. I guess that makes sense. Four. Because there's four of everything else. No, there is five. Three. And it just to, to confirm, see, there's two. So I'm not... Those, those really are three unique die. Um, okay, so let's do uh, some dice for Tadius. Three, three, four for Tadius. Not bad, not great. It's okay. It's fine. I mean, nobody's wounded, so he doesn't really have any need for a, a six. Two, uh, two dice for Amelin. Six and a four. Janus, four dice, because he's not injured. In Ooh, that's a horrible array. One, one, two, three. Although I kind of. For this round, I'm kind of hoping, obviously, to finish off the two remaining baddies. I hope they they stay too, and then just do some exp ex uh, some some searches. That's really my main goal, my intention for this round. Whether that happens or not, we'll have to have to find out. All right, and this is Pius. Four, four, two. Not terrible for Pius, actually. First up is Janus. We already knew that. Where is Janus? He's way back there. And he's not terribly fast, Janus. He's um, he's a m mover of two. And he's got a one, one, two, and a three. So uh, I guess he'll move once for his one. Or, uh, yeah, move, move two hexes for his die of one. One, two. And then we'll have him spend another one. One, two. Two, and then I'm gonna. I I I think I'm gonna have him spend this two of his to move even further because I really don't want him in the way of Pius, and then he can attack with his three. A three activation for him really gets him nothing exciting. He needs a four or better to get like his two two attacks his two attack special attack so i guess he's just going to be using his um his normal everyday rapier or pistol d8 he misses not terribly surprised my question i guess is do i want him to spend one of these destiny die and i'm kind of feeling like maybe he should because i mean one two three these people need to kill these two guys absolutely like it needs to happen the question i guess is whether he wants to spend a six 
or whether someone else would be better off with a six, or should he just spend another two? Eh, I guess just spend another two. And he misses again. All right, well, Pius needs something to do, so we'll just let that, we'll let that go. We'll let that be what happens. All right, hostile group one. Um, hmm. I guess Janus would have been better off to go towards their ghoul, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I mean, he, he would have missed, uh, presumably. I mean, unless that butterfly effect would have changed my dice roll or something, but yeah. All right, so one. That's... I'm pretty, I forget who is... The Urghuls are one. Yes, okay. I thought they were. So one. So first we need to roll for reinforcements. And that's a 19, so no reinforcements show up for the ghouls. That's really good news. And then we need to roll for the action of the ghouls. And that's a 13. Which for the ghouls means that he's going to charge, it looks like. He's close to Janus. So he is going to charge at Janus. A charge action is where you move towards the closest and then you attack the closest. So that's pretty obvious. So he moves. This is literally, I think, I think this is the first attack that a uh, hostile has made this game, I think. Okay, or uh, this this combat encounter, rather. I didn't, like, the whole game. Okay, so he's going to just take a d8. I guess I should have moved that, but oh well. That was a success. That is a success. But when he attacks, he makes three attacks. So that's not good for Janus. So that's one success. And then Janus gets to save against that, that success. So that's what we'll do. So Janus's defense is a d8, which he's been having great luck with so far. And, oh, he got a success, actually. So that's great. So that means that his success negates that success. So next is another, another successful attack from the ghoul and a failed save. So actually Janus does gain a wound for that particular interaction. That's too bad. So he's got a wound on his little chart now. And here's another ghoul attack. This is the final one. It's a miss. So no defense roll is required, obviously. All right, that's not great, but not, not horrible either. All right, we'll go next to Pius Vorn. Pius Vorn has a 2, a 4, and a 4 to spend for her actions. And uh, she can use her flamer for just a, a 1. So, I mean, she can use this 2 to use her flamer. She gets to roll a d12 for that against... I'm, I'm targeting the Negavolt cultist there. 2 or 3 hexes away. Uh, critical hit. That is dead. And that is exactly what I wanted to happen this round. So she rolls uh, for inspiration and fails to get inspiration. This is a, a tough crowd. They they are not inspired for much. Alright, so that's, I mean, that's great. That's one creature out of the way. But now I need to get her closer to that ghoul. Uh, she does have a, a move speed of three, so we could spend a four. Well, you know what? Hold on, hold on. Let's spend this um, destiny die three to move three. One, two. She's two hexes away from the ghoul, so now she can spend a four to roll a d12. And she gets one success. So this token goes to the ghoul. Oop, not, not that side, that side. And then I'm going to spend another four to do the same thing. And that's a critical, <laughs> a critical success. Oh, I love this. Love it. That is so amazing. That, I mean, that's, that is exactly what I wanted. Does she get inspired? No, she'll never be inspired. No one here is ever inspired. Uh, so she, that's that. And I guess because 
I want someone to explore this round. That's just kind of a thing that I had in my head they were going to do this round. I think the best person, the best candidate to get to this thing is Amelin. You know what? I, I am forgetting how cover works. I, I think... I don't remember if movement goes through the cover barriers or not. I think they do. Yes, of course they do. I knew that. These barriers, these are, are, are they're, they're cover for shooting, but they're, they're just, you know, I imagine that they're like waist high or knee high, and you can crouch down when you're, when you're, you know, between when that that's between you and an enemy but if you want to move over it you can you can just kind of do a running leap over it so i think what i'm going to have amelin do is use her four to move three one two three and then use uh, one of these two sixes to just kind of move up to this space here with the magical search token on it and I guess I remove the token. I remember being confused by this earlier. So now she gets to search. And there's the special rule on it. Um, when an explorer searches a discovery marker, they draw two discovery cards instead of one. Okay. She gets to do a search action. When the action is taken, remove the discovery marker from the hex, if there is one, and draw the top card from the discovery card deck. Okay, so actually, yeah, it is confirmed. You you remove the, the discovery token according to the rules, and then she needs to draw a card from the discovery deck. Except she doesn't have to draw a card. She, has to, she gets to draw two cards. So one is um, Archaeotech valued at two, and Archaeo... Oh, and a clue. That's great. A and that was the six destiny die she just spent that to search okay well obviously the board is looking really good right now whether it's going to last we're not sure ever i do have to roll an event die 19 on the event die so 19 is the heroic effect the leader picks an explorer that is out of action, deploy the explorer in the same hex as another explorer or as close to another explorer as possible, and then make a vitality roll. If no explorers are out of action, pick an explorer, make a vitality roll. All right, well, that's cool. I, I don't remember if, I, I don't think vitality rolls negate, I'm pretty sure they don't negate a grievous wound. So I think the leader, which is me, I guess, uh, is going to pick Janus because... That would be 14 of the rules booklet. Okay. Nobody has any wounds that would be healable except uh, Janus. Janus has one wound. And his vitality die is a d8. Literally, I think Janus's all of his die are d8s. Like, I think that's all he has. Uh, so that's a fail. So he heals nothing. So that heroic effect was not very heroic. Uh, who's next? Anyone? Taddeus is next? Wait a minute. Who's... who's... Oh, did I just jump? I just somehow jumped the gun. I did. Yeah, that's silly. That's all right. It doesn't... doesn't matter. So Taddeus is next, and he has three, three, and four. He only moves two. So I'm just... I think I'm just going to move him into the... into the place. So one, two... One, two, and then another one, one, two. I have no idea why, so he's in the maglev chamber. Um, I have no idea why I did the Blackstone event roll. I, I think I, I got out of, I, I clearly forgot that I still had people to go. And then the Negavolt cultists. So um, do they get reinforcements? 20? No, they do not get reinforcements. Okay, cool. Now the game is, or the, the round is over, and I would have done the Blackstone Fortress roll, event roll, and then I would have done the Vitality check. Janus failed it, and, and that's the end of the round. I don't know why I did it out of, everything out of order there at the end. I just got, I think, quite excited about having cleared off all the hostiles from the board and getting discovery cards. Yeah, a lot was happening. I just, just sort of lost track of what I was doing. That's fine. 
doesn't really matter once the hostiles are off the board uh, until they get reinforcements, which c can happen at any moment. Uh, so I think that's it for this round. Looking good. Let's hope it lasts. Thanks for watching.